everyone. I'm Casey Havikus, one of the Dairy Management Specialists with the North Country Regional Ag Team. Thank you for tuning in to another one of our podcast episodes. Today, I am joined by Dr. Emily miller Cushion, who is an Assistant Professor in the Department of Animal Science at the University of Florida. Emily is going to discuss some of the benefits of providing hay to pre-weaned calves. Thank you very much for joining me today, Emily. Hi, Casey. Thanks for the uh, invitation to participate in this podcast. We are very glad to have you, and I think the farmers that are going to be listening will greatly benefit from the information. So why don't you start off by giving a brief introduction on yourself, your research focus, and your area of interest a little bit more. Sure. So uh, I came from Canada, where I completed my PhD at the University of Guelph, where I was focused on looking at the development of feeding behavior in calves. I came to the University of Florida as an assistant professor in 2014, so I've been here about six years now, and I have um, been continuing to look at uh, dairy calf behavior and welfare, and in my lab, we focus on how different aspects of early management and aspects of calf rearing affect behavioral development, so things like social housing, feeding method, and then other aspects of the environment like brush access or uh, pen design. And some of the big questions we're interested about in my lab is how early experience affects calf behavioral development and and long-term welfare, and then what calf behavior can also tell us about their welfare or how they're feeling. So you mentioned that one of the areas that you focus on is the behavioral effects of providing hay to calves. So that's a question that we often get from farms is, should we be providing hay to these calves at what age, et cetera? So are Mm -hmm. you able to elaborate a little bit more on some of the benefits of providing hay to pre-weaned calves? Yeah, so this is something we've looked at in a couple of different trials, both with individually housed calves and group housed calves, and also in interaction with some other aspects of feeding. So, yeah, there's there's often some concern that providing hay might um, negatively impact the calf, this idea that it could reduce starter intake and then maybe negatively affect growth. So that's been discussed as a reason why some people don't provide it, because we do, of course, know that you know, start is really important for stimulating rumen development and um, easing calves through milk weaning. But there is a lot of evidence now that hay provision can actually stimulate increased uh, total solid feed intake, so either not affecting starter intake or even increasing starter intake. And in two recent studies, we've seen that providing calves with free access to, to a chopped grass hay resulted in them consuming more solid feed total. So they were consuming about the same amount of starter, but they were also eating hay. And then particularly later in the milk feeding period, they had greater weight gain and a greater average daily gain through weaning. So it does suggest that there are these you know, performance benefits of providing calves access to hay. So one thing to think about, though, um, we know that in different studies, hay can have different effects on calves. You know, sometimes we'll see that calves eat a lot of hay and, you know, some calves eat more hay than others. So like any change we make to a feeding program, if we start providing calves with hay, it's a good idea to keep an eye on how they're doing with that. But the advantages of providing hay can, I think, outweigh any potential risk that it will um, reduce starter intake. So Some of the uncertainty in terms of how hay is going to affect the calf is due to all the other sources of variation and how calves are fed and managed. So that calf performance and their feed intake can depend on the type of hay that we're giving them, um, the type of starter. So for example, whether it's pelleted or texturized could affect how they respond to also having access to hay milk feeding level, which also affects solid feed intake, and amino social housing can affect feed intake, and so on. And there's probably other things I'm missing here, or we don't even necessarily know yet. And the provision of hay could have some slightly different effects in interaction with all of these other sources of variation in calf management. So it's always a good idea to just keep an eye on how the calves are doing in the particular environment they're in. So in addition to some of the performance benefits, is there any impact on feeding behavior for those calves? 
Yes. And I think that's really one of the big advantages from my perspective on providing uh, calves with access to hay. So we know that when they have hay, they spend more time eating solid feed. They actually spend quite a bit of time eating it throughout the day. In some recent data, we saw they spent about 20 minutes total during the 12 hour period of daylight. Um, and they spend time eating it around the time of milk delivery. So this time they spend eating hay is time they're spending interacting with food in addition to starter. Um, and it could be beneficial just in providing them with something to do, to providing opportunity for um, more variable foraging behavior um, during that milk feeding period. And that time they spent eating hay, I think maybe suggests that um, they have this preference for it, that they like eating hay. I mean, we do see that they spend quite a bit of time actually eating it earlier in the milk feeding period, um, and then relatively less time eating it compared to starter later in the milk feeding period. So it seems like it's something they start interacting with and they're motivated to, you know, to sniff and to chew and to eat, even when they're quite young. And one thing that we focus a lot on with mature cows is sorting behavior. So do calves sort if they're provided with hay or is there any considerations in terms of the physical characteristics of the hay that you do provide? Right, yeah, and we've looked at this um, a little bit. There's There's been a few different studies looking at what calves do when they're provided either hay and starter as a mixture or any kind of mixed diet. And just like adult cows, calves are picky they're surprisingly good at you know, choosing what they want from within the diet. So we have seen that calves will support a diet of a chopped hay mixed with starter. And I actually, I mentioned that calves spend quite a bit of time eating hay early in the feeding period. And we've actually seen that calves will sort a mixed diet in favor of hay earlier in the milk feeding period and then shift their pattern of sorting in favor of starter closer to the time of weaning. So they're kind of adjusting their sorting behavior towards what they want to eat or what they need to eat at different time points. So, you know, it's interesting. I think providing that mixed diet, it, it might be a good idea if it's feasible from a management standpoint or if it you know, makes it easier for you to give calves hay, but it doesn't seem like it's going to stop calves from just picking and sorting to get whatever they want. And it could actually be encouraging sorting behavior. So I think it's probably just just as good or maybe better to give chopped hay on the side. And I do suggest chopped hay just because it's a little easier for calves to pick up and chew. Um, and then providing it separately just gives them that choice of what they want to eat at any point. Yeah, that's really interesting. So basically, they shift their sorting behavior in order to accommodate the nutritional benefits that they need at that certain time point of their life. Is that what you're implying? Yeah, I think so. So we know, you know, as they start getting weaned up with milk and they're probably just hungrier, they need that energy that comes from the starter. But that sorting in favor of hay earlier in the milk feeding period, you know, they're, they're relying on milk for most of their energy requirements at that point, but they seem to just want you to have something else to chew and eat. So what's driving intake of these different feed types might be a little bit different. They're not necessarily relying on hay for just for its nutritional value. It, it's something that they just seem to be wanting to eat and chew because you know, maybe that gives them something to sort of manipulate or it's just something that they're, they're a type of foraging behavior that they're wanting to express. Yeah, that's really interesting. Are you able to elaborate a little bit more on how hay provision may influence non-nutritive oral behaviors? Yes, so there, there have been a number of studies that have shown actually across species, that provision of more foraging material reduces um, different types of abnormal oral behavior. So if you think about tongue rolling in older cattle, in calves, uh, we can see cross-sucking, which of course is problematic in group housed calves. And we also see a lot of um, these non-nutritive oral behaviors that you mentioned. So things like pen-directed sucking, we see quite a lot of where the calf just spends a lot of time sucking and chewing on whatever is available to them in their pen. So bars or buckets or whatever. So calves spend a lot of time doing this. We've seen in some recent work that they actually spend more time doing this than they do feeding, than they do you know, grooming, than they do pretty much anything else. And we have consistently seen that giving calves access to hay reduces the amount of time they spend performing these behaviors. And particularly, it decreases the duration of pen-directed sucking later in the milk feeding period. 
Um, and we've seen this in both individually housed calves and group housed calves, where often as they get close to weaning, they spend more time performing non nutritive oral behavior. But that increase over time, particularly around weaning, can be reduced by, by providing hay. So you kind of alluded to this. Is there anything else that can cause these behaviors? If, if firms are seeing these non nutritive oral behaviors, can they attribute it solely to hay provision or are there other factors that may influence that? A lot of um, these behaviors have to do with milk feeding. So both milk feeding level, you know, are the calves hungry um, and method. We know that calves are really motivated to be stuck and if they're not provided to accommodate that sucking behavior when they're consuming milk, they're going to spend more time performing some type of non nutritive oral behavior. And then also the method of weaning. So again, these behaviors are going to increase around weaning, but if they're weaned abruptly, calves are especially likely to start cross-sucking or performing some type of non nutritive oral behavior. So those considerations around milk feeding are really important to think about for non nutritive oral behaviors. But we have also seen some other effects of providing calves access to essentially some behavioral opportunities, uh, things for them to do in their pen that can reduce non nutritive oral behavior. So we saw in some recent work that giving calves access to brushes, uh, actually just manual brushes that they could use to sort of facilitate some grooming, actually reduced how much time they spent sucking on the pen. And I think that the and the reason that hay reduces non nutritive oral behaviors might actually be similar, this idea that it's just giving calves something to do. So when they're active around feeding, they're really searching for some kind of stimulation, they're really active, but having that hay to spend time eating and chewing might direct them away from starting some type of non nutritive oral behavior. That's really interesting. Are you able to elaborate a little bit more on how you think forage provision may relate to the welfare of the calf? Sure. So I think that the first thing to maybe think about is that calves choose to eat hay. Uh, when it's provided, they always they, they spend some time eating it, some of them more than others. And we also see, you know, especially when we get that mixed diet, when you see them sorting for hay, this could suggest to us that they're actually pretty motivated to eat hay. So that might indicate then that we're improving their welfare by providing this thing that they seem to be motivated to consume at least some of the time. I, I think it's also interesting to think about how hay provision accommodates individual variability. So we know that calves are different. Some calves eat more hay than others. So even if we don't necessarily see very high intake of hay at a group level, there is still going to be those handful of animals that are really benefiting from hay um, for whatever reason. So it's nice to allow for that flexibility. Um, and then, of course, when we see some benefit of providing hay for reducing unrestricted oral behaviors, it suggests that there's that, that benefit for the calf as well. Um, and those sorts of you know, the stimulation, providing cows with something to do, um, it could be something specific to hay, or it could just be generally providing more opportunities for different types of feed and variety of feeding behavior. But it does seem that there are some benefits that we see consistently when we provide calves with access to hay that likely improves their welfare. Yeah, it sounds like it could be a very beneficial strategy for farms. So do you think that there are any long-term effects of providing hay to calves? I would speculate that there are, but there have not been a lot of studies following calves much beyond weaning. We do know, um, partly from work in different species, that uh, early exposure to two different types of feed could affect longer term feeding behavior, um, like motor patterns for consuming feed, as well as feed preferences. So I, I would expect that early exposure to hay, um, or maybe even exposure to different types of feed in general early in life could affect behavior beyond weaning and maybe acceptance of, of novel diets, but there needs to be some longer term work to evaluate that more. More generally, we've been looking in my lab at how early opportunities for behavioral development um, achieved through environmental complexity, so giving calves more to do and how that affects their, their longer term behavior. One thing that uh, we see across species is that early opportunities for broader behavioral expression or environmental complexity 
affects cognitive development, so affects longer term learning ability and behavioral flexibility. So in, in dairy cattle, we can think about how this is important just because we expect our calves and heifers and cows as they develop to be able to adapt to changing environments. And that requires this learning ability, this ability to um, relearn what to do when something in their environment has changed. So in young calves, it's been shown that social contact affects ability to, to relearn a task or behavioral flexibility. And in, the, in my lab, we have also um, seen some preliminary results that suggest that providing access to hay alone can also affect this, this learning ability. So we looked at calves provided um, the same amount of milk. They all had access to starter, but some had hay and some didn't. And just having access to hay was enough to improve their ability in a learning task. So they were better at relearning something. In a, in a spatial learning task. So, so this is preliminary data that we need to you know, dig into a little bit more, but it does suggest that just this fairly minimal change in accommodating foraging behavior, providing access to hay, could have a longer term effect on you know, broader behavioral development and performance of different behaviors than we might expect. Yeah, that's a really fascinating result and interesting to hear that something that you do right, you know, in the first few weeks of a calf's life could benefit her behavior as she grows up and matures and becomes a lactating calf. So that's definitely something that is very interesting. Yeah, and I think, um, you know, it's, it's an interesting result and it's maybe a little bit of a surprising result, but I do think it sort of highlights the importance of doing some more of this long-term work with calves. So what effect, this range of factors for how we can rear them in early life, how that's going to affect them longer term. And that leads me into my last question. Is there anything else that you think we need to learn about hay provision or are there any future research ideas that you're looking forward to working on in your lab group? Yeah, so I think I think there are a lot of questions that would that we could answer by looking at providing hay in different settings to be able to you know better generalize some of our findings. I find it difficult to make recommendations for providing hay in terms of you know when to offer it, how much to offer it, and so on, just because you know the answer to that question really depends on so much else to do with how the calves are being raised. So I think more understanding of the effects of the type of hay, age of introduction of hay and how these factors interact with other components of calf feeding and management, like the type of starter and milk feeding level, would be helpful. I mean, at this point, I think providing hay is a good thing to try, but more specifics about how calves are likely to respond in different situations would be, would be good. Then, like we, we already discussed, there is this potential to learn more about the long-term effects of hay provision, um, both in terms of performance and behavior development beyond Weaning, I think would be really important to figure that out. So I am going to add one last question, if that's okay. So you mentioned that there are different management considerations when providing hay to the calf, but do you think that there is an age when the calf is too young to be provided with hay? You know, this is just my personal opinion, but I don't think so. If they're too young, I mean, it might be something they don't necessarily eat, but it certainly wouldn't hurt. I would say that if you're going to provide hay, there's no reason not to provide it at the same time you start offering starter. Yeah, they might sniff it, they might only you know, carry a piece of it around, but I don't see any harm in doing that. And I think, you know, in our work, we've seen that calves will eat a certain amount of hay even in the first couple of weeks of life. And they certainly spend a certain, uh, quite a bit of time chewing on it and interacting with it even before they're actually eating much of it. So I would say that there's no reason not to just offer it from birth and just give have the opportunity to, to eat some or to sniff it if they want to. You know, people are sometimes concerned about providing hay, but I really think the benefits, both in the performance and behavior of the calves outweigh any potential concerns. So I encourage offering calves hay even something low quality, it doesn't need to be anything fancy, even straw uh, can have some of the same beneficial effects. Um, and just seeing what they do with it, you know, keeping an eye on starter intake and weight gain while you're making this change. But, but just uh, seeing 
how it affects the calves. And viewing this as something that's, you know, partly nutrition, it needs to be factored into that side of calf feeding, but really sort of a benefit for calf behavior, just like, you know, giving them something else to do while they're growing. Yeah, thank you for those points. I definitely enjoyed talking with you on this topic, and I think that our listeners will be able to learn a lot about what they can do when providing hay to calves. So I really appreciate your time, and I enjoyed having you, and I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Thanks, Casey. I was glad to participate, and always happy to talk about calf behavior. Thank you.